Hey everybody, this video is about making a 55 gallon do-it-yourself tank stand. The reason I'm making the stand is because uh, I was able to get uh, this tank and stand from someone's uh, garage on Craigslist. Um, you know, and there's going to be 700 plus pounds on there. Uh, and I figured if it was level I would do it, but you know, I started looking at it and saw, you know, you could shove a piece of paper under here the entire length. And that doesn't really sit easy with me, you know, knowing that uh, there's going to be a lot of weight on there. And you can even shove it under the corners on some of the sides. Um, so this didn't really sit right with me. So I decided to go with wood. Um, they will actually cut it for you at Home Depot uh, free of charge, as far as I know. Uh, there was no charge for cutting. Uh, and the, the big eight-foot two by fours were three dollars each and I used about seven of them to get this much wood um, so I'll put the dimensions uh, on a list somewhere at some point in the video and uh, I will let you know how it turns out um, these are some of the things that I picked up uh, some of the tools that I thought I would need uh, one of the first things I got was this uh, sandpaper for wood is you can pick this up at Home Depot. Well, I got all this stuff at Home Depot. Um, but this will let you sand all the edges. It took me about an hour, an hour and a half to sand all just, you know, the four corners of each piece of wood here uh, to get rid of the burrs and whatnot. And really, that was it. Yeah, basically, I would just take the uh, sandpaper and wrap it around a block of wood like this and then just, you know, rub it over the edge. You can see I messed this one up pretty good. Uh, so that's sandpaper. The next thing I read about in a video that I thought I might need uh, this is called a corner clamp. And basically this will join the two pieces of wood at a right angle um, so that you can drill in the screws without having to hold it uh, or mess it up or anything like that. Uh, that was about nine bucks. Sandpaper was about, I don't know, four bucks. Um, next thing you're probably going to need, uh, a level. This is just a small level, it was about four bucks, but I'm probably going to need a bigger one. I read that you, you might need a bigger one, but who knows. Um, I'm just going to try it with this one. If it's inconclusive, I'll go pick up a bigger one. Uh, bigger ones cost 12, 13 bucks that I saw. Uh, next thing, uh, I got these Spax screws. Um, so these use a Torx uh, attachment, as you can see here by the uh, symbol. And it actually comes with the attachment. I don't know if you can see it there in the light. Uh, but it comes with it, uh, so you can screw things in right away. The box cost about eight bucks, and it comes with 130 screws. Should be more than enough, uh, and they're wood to wood screws. Um, so there's that. And for about a dollar each, a couple of these clamps. I figure I might need these at some point, and for a dollar, why not? I toss them in the toolbox. All right. So one more thing I wanted to add is that when uh, I spec this out on paper. Uh, I thought that a 2x4 was actually 2 inches by 4 inches, and it's actually not. Um, I'm a little off here, but um, from the small tape measure, it's actually 3 and 15 30 seconds. Um, on most of them, I measured a, quite a bunch of them to make sure the measurement was accurate. Um, so it's not exactly 3 and a half. It's, it's, a, it's a 30 second under a half. Um, so basically... Uh, you know, it's one and a half uh, instead of two for the two by four. So if you measure it this way, it's actually one and a half. Um, so you have to put that into your measurement, um, which I'll go over later um, for exactly the length of pieces that I'm cutting uh, that I had cut for me. Um, I guess I'll just say them out loud here. Um, the, the long ones over here, uh, those were 48 and a quarter inches. Uh, so that's that. Uh, I had eight pieces made of nine and three quarter inches, and those are the middle parts for the brace for the top and bottom. Uh, then I had what is it, 21 and a, and a 16th uh, for lengthwise, you know, the stand part of the tank, and then the straight 28s, these here, 28 inches, uh, those go literally from the floor flush to the top of the tank. 
and uh, I'll, I guess I'll eventually show you the configuration once I have it going. Um, so maybe I'll put a list in an annotation or something like that. Uh, so yeah, remember, a 2x4 is not a 2x4, and put that into your calculations. Now that you got 1.5 one and 1.5 and one and joined together for a total of 3 inches, uh, the screws I got were 2.5 inches so they don't go all the way through. Um, so you can see that uh, the bottom part of the screw is threaded. Um, I read that this is so that uh, it will actually pull the two pieces of wood together, whereas if the whole thing was threaded, it, it can actually push them apart. Um, so be sure if you're getting 2x4s that are 1.5 inches and you're joining those together, you get a 2.5 inch screw because you can see how far it actually goes in. Uh, and it doesn't go quite to the end, uh, but should pull it together pretty well. Alright, so here I have the bottom frame pretty much made. Uh, just the outer parts are really connected at this point. Uh, I wanted to modify the middle part uh, so that I can put uh, braces coming up from the back and then put this actual, you know, 2 by 4 straight on top of here coming up. It's not, you know, it's not exactly even, but this will make me help, you know, make the, uh, the doors later. So, so this gap is, from the end, 20 and 3 quarter inches. Uh, and same from here, 20 and 3 quarter inches. While I was screwing these braces in, um, I noticed that one side would kind of, you know, bend to the side, and I wasn't sure how far I needed to knock it in. So, you know, I don't have a T-score or anything like that, so I figured I would just take this, you know, and put that in the corner, and that's pretty good. That's 90 degrees, so it's knocked in enough. Um, if it wasn't, you know, there would be a gap. Um, so you can kind of use that for, I don't know, uh, ghetto 90 degree angle management. So here's the completed frame. Uh, it took a while to kind of get it perfect because there was a wobble, you know, if I, if I would push down on one end, the other corner, you know, if I push on one corner, the other corner would pop up in the air. Uh, it turns out that's because the floor is completely uneven. Um, so what I did to really test is I put it up on, you know, two close uh, two by fours and that kind of got rid of a lot of the deformity in the floor and let me test a lot better and then it didn't wobble nearly as much. Um, also I would uh, guess that the, the weight would be redistributed anyway, you know, it would just kind of push it into shape. Um, so yeah, so got to make one more of these and uh, and then I'll start, you know, with the lateral part, the working my way up. Alright, so I have the uh, stand up part of the stand here the uh, vertical and uh, let me see if I can give you the idea of how I oriented these uh, the, the 28 inch uh, which is the entire height of the stand goes all the way down to the floor and bolted in or screwed in are the 21 and 1 16th pieces uh, 21 and 1 16th will also go here in the middle later uh, but for now uh, you can see how this is when I make another frame uh, it'll literally, literally just be the inverse of this. Uh, lay the stand right on top and bolt it in. So here's the second top frame sitting on the top here. And uh, the way you put it on is just kind of slide, slide the frame on. You know, the whole thing lifts up and just sits on those uh, bottom two. And it's not exact yet, but once I screw it in, it'll be nice and tight. All right, so this is a little bit later. Uh, I decided to do the same kind of posts from the corners in the middle. And you could see I dropped the bottom piece in. Uh, so basically it was just a half inch plywood uh, and I needed to go have help from somebody in a shop to cut this because Home Depot wasn't going to cut this and a hacksaw isn't going to cut it either. So on every single corner you have three inches by five inches on every corner. The five inches includes the two by four and the width of this and three inches, three inches is here on all four corners. And then in the middle, you're going to want about three and a half, you know, this way. So let's two by four in, and then three here. Now, this was a really tight fit. I would suggest cutting off another sixteenth everywhere just so it slides in and it'll drop in. I had to literally push this down for 15 minutes, um, but it's perfect and it helped stabilize the structure, I guess. 
uh, haven't even screwed it in yet. So pretty much see all three posts are going to be pretty sturdy and I'm going to drill the plywood down in. The problems I ran into is that when I finally screwed this thing all together, uh, you know, make sure that you get all the screws on every side. Uh, you can kind of see how I screwed it in here. Uh, the screws pretty much everywhere. Uh, is that these two posts, um, they're sticking up like two millimeters or so. Uh, this one a little bit less. Um, what I'm going to want to do is put a half inch piece of plywood on the top of here once I'm all done. Um, so this is not the actual piece, this is a quarter inch piece. Uh, but as you can see, uh, it fits flush on the entire thing, except for when it gets to down there. You see, it's uh, knocking against this, it's too high. Uh, so what I did is I got some 60 grit coarse sandpaper and a sanding block, uh, and I'm gonna see if I can, you know, sand this piece down and this piece down so that this, you know, this will be flush and I can put a, a uh, half inch piece of plywood on top of it. So I just got done sanding. Just want to show you what I was using to sand. It's this 3M block. Uh, it's about six bucks at Home Depot. Uh, I also got 60 grit sandpaper. Uh, all purpose from Home Depot as well. I got the three squares of it. It's about four bucks. Uh, you can cut it into about four strips that are just big enough to fit on here the long way. You only gotta, you only gotta cut this way. And that's it. Uh, you know, you lift this thing up and you put the sandpaper in and you get sanding. So the important thing here is, um, there were a few sand points I needed to do. One, this is the bottom uh, on its side here. Uh, this bottom needs to be flush. If you can take your finger and it feels somewhat flush, you're done. But before, this was sticking up quite a bit. So I had to sand for a while, just go along the grain uh, for a while. Um, after you're done, this is going to leave a pretty, pretty thick layer. I don't know if you can see it. No, you can't really see it. Ah, oh, maybe. All right, well, it's going to leave sawdust everywhere. Um, so I'll clean it up later. Um, so yeah, so you want to get uh, this here on both sides. Um, your, your joints also, you can sand them down so that they're flush uh, on all eight corners, you know, all four here and on the other side. Also, all 12 of the posts, or all sides of the posts anyway, um, this was the hardest part. Uh, let me get over here on the light. I did this on the top and bottom. Uh, if you can run your finger and it's pretty much smooth, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to be you know flush. I mean, this stuff was sticking up like out to here, so I sanded it a lot, you know, and uh, got it pretty flush. Um, what you can do is you can take a board. I'll, I'll show you up here. If you have your quarter-inch plywood. You can just test by putting it across the top here. And if you don't see anything, you know, I'm not touching it. If you don't see it sticking up at all, well, maybe a tiny bit, but, you know, it's a pretty good test. I mean, this stuff was sticking up like, like that before, so. A little bit of an update. Uh, I'm going to put plywood on the top and bottom so that it's sticking out a half inch, um, you know, around the tank. So um, so I'm going to have to sand that down all the corners along the edges and uh, on top, um, you know, for top and bottom. And then I'm going to screw it in with these, uh, these smaller spack screws. They're number six. So they're a little bit smaller, but the heads of them still bite into the wood. So you don't have to use any countersinking or, you know, have that drill bit, drill an extra little hole before every one of them. You can just screw these right in and then sand over the top of them if anything sticks up. I wanted to add a quick little note here that since there's a half inch off of where your 2x4s are at, you kind of have to uh, not even eyeball it, but it slides all over the place whenever you touch it, so you're going to need to have at least one clamp to hold it in place when you're putting any screws in. Uh, what I did to make this easier without having to measure every single time is I measured a half inch from the end of every single corner so that I can just eyeball it if, I, if it got accidentally moved. All right, so real quick, uh, this is how it's looking with two pieces of plywood. Um, that have the stain on it. I stained it and I have about three coats of polyurethane on it. I also polyurethane the bottom. Um, so you basically stain it and then you use 220 grit sandpaper uh, after it's, it's dry, sand it, put about three stains on it and then after that um, you can wait 15 to 30 minutes for the stain 
but for polyurethane, you got to wait four hours. You might as well wait a whole day. I'm um, just putting on one coat per day. I'm um, looking pretty shiny. I just put this on, so hopefully this will dry in the morning. I think three coats will be enough to make it somewhat uh, waterproof. Uh, and the bottom, too. I'm going to do the same thing to waterproof it on the bottom. And I also polyurethane the doors. Uh, so I'll put the measurements in for the doors uh, somewhere in the video. And that's it for now. So I got the uh, exterior on here. Uh, it's quarter inch plywood. It's not nailed in yet, uh, but you can see I just kind of slid it in here. Um, you have to do some sanding to get this to kind of fall into place. Uh, so let me go over the parts. Uh, if you're interested, I'll probably just label them at some point in the video. But uh, there's, there's these four parts right here uh, on the top and on the bottom. Uh, those are three and a half wide by 17 and 3 eighths. Uh, and then you have the middle one is three and a half wide by 28. And then on the end here is 28 long and five and a quarter. And that's on both sides. And then you have the sides themselves, um, 28 inches long uh, and 12 and 3 quarters. Uh, I don't know if you can see here, but the front sits on the top. So this is 12 and 3 quarters, and this piece here is 5 and a quarter, and that extra quarter sits on the top. Um, it did not join together perfectly. I had to do a lot of sanding, uh, mostly on the edges of these four to get the middle piece to fit, but the ends fit perfectly uh, and I need to nail them together because they, they bow out a little bit uh, so that they're flush. Um, use 60 grit sandpaper here. Uh, literally it was it was sticking out like the width of my finger here. So I sanded a whole lot uh, with 60 grit sandpaper on both sides and uh, up there too and it fell right into place. Uh, and I'm probably going to nail it in on a weekend because it's really loud. Uh, and also the doors. Uh, I was able to get the hinges on the doors here uh, measuring four inches from the top and four inches from the bottom uh, and pencil marked it and just screwed them in. Uh, the screws that came with the hinges uh, don't pop through so that was pretty good. Uh, so I guess the next step is to nail all this stuff in and then sand it all down with 220 grit sandpaper uh, and then stain it and then after it's stained maybe once or twice uh, start, po start putting polyurethane on it maybe two or three coats maybe four uh, and then I'll screw the doors on uh, and then once that's done it's pretty much done I might nail the back to have some kind of a back on it I think it's sitting over there somewhere in uh, the wrong stain color always test out your stain color first uh, and that'll pretty much be it okay so this is the stand after all the panels have been nailed in um, I used a, a nail sink to put the screws or the nails in deeper than the surface of the wood so that I could put wood putty over it. Uh, you could probably see where I did it, um, but it's way better than, you know, um, just not putting anything there. It looks pretty finished uh, when you stand back from a little bit. Uh, once I stain it, the, the wood stainer or the wood filler is stainable. Uh, so hopefully I'm thinking you won't see, you know, those holes. Um, and then I, I, uh, Nailed some plywood to the back as well, that, that other piece that I had lying around, just so there's something on the back. Uh, that's pretty much it. I also went with a second piece of plywood on the bottom. Uh, it came out pretty straight. Um, so it's looking good. Uh, just gotta, I've already sanded it, so now I just got to stain it and then put some polyurethane on it, maybe three or four coats. And the top is actually looking really nice now that I've been letting it sit. It's really shiny. Uh, and it's really smooth. Well, the parts that are smooth anyway. This is a crappy piece of plywood that I got, so there's holes everywhere. And that's it. Okay, so I did two stains on the outside. Uh, there's a lot of light in here, so the shadows, it'll look a little bit uneven, but you can pretty much tell. Uh, this is what I want to go with. That's the lighter side. Uh, the dark side is in the front here. Um, so after I put the polyurethane on it'll probably get a little more amber uh, maybe a, little, a smidge darker uh, and also you know if you're looking at what's on the top here uh, I bought some molding it was six dollars for eight feet of it and it looks pretty good and it's gonna cover up the plywood 
Um, and then you got to get a miter box. You can get a miter box and a saw for eight bucks, although I'd use a hacksaw with it, uh, with a fine tooth, because it cuts it a lot better. Um, you know, basically you'll just join the two edges together. You got to do a little bit of measuring, but just remember when you're doing it that measure to that edge. You see where, you know, the, the this corner edge here meets. I can't point it out with my finger because I'm holding the camera, but you get the idea. M measure to the 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 less length part, and you'll be fine. Um, you know, just compensate for sticking out a quarter inch. I measured; it's about a quarter inch. And then be sure to sand it. You know, you can take uh, the 220 grit sander and get pretty, sand it pretty well. I don't know if I can get a. Yeah, so that's about it. Uh, I stained. I stained all of these. I'm not going to put one on the back, and uh, we'll let you know. All right, here's the finished product. Um, looks a little brighter in the video than it does in real life. Uh, I guess I'm not capturing the light quite right. Uh, shines just a little bit because of the satin finish, not glossy, uh, which is perfect because if I had put glossy, it was going to be probably reflect way too much. Uh, but this is it. Uh, so you can see, I got a crazy glued with Gorilla Glue, the trim. Uh, trim is not perfect on the corners, um, you know, and even worse on the bottom. Uh, I cut a little too short, that's why. Um, but all in all, pretty good. I just laid it flat on its back and put, uh, you know, uh, the hinges on it and just screwed in the hinges. And then I have these rubber feet things for when you close them. You can see them on the, on the end there. And uh, pretty good. So that's it. Um, didn't put anything on the back. It's kind of just open. I might in the future put some trim on the back or possibly on the corners. You can see how it kind of sticks out. I left room in case I want to put, you know, another thing of trim on the back. It'll be flush with that. Um, and I'm going to leave it open because, I don't know, there's going to be a lot of stuff I want to put under there. And, you know, I want there to be room for it to move around instead of having to put it through a tiny hole or something like that. So that's it. Thanks for watching.